Spirit of the Lord Amen. is here. Good song. Thank you, Shad and Mika. All right, girls. Uh, we got two girls from the House of Faith. House of I mean, House of Victory. I'm sorry. 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 They have a lot of faith <laughs> at the House of Victory. Amen.
precious blood atoning then i repented of my sins and won the victory oh victory jesus my savior forever he sought me Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his precious power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory, Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He punched me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he's built for me in glory. I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory Jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me punched me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Amen. Is this got a lock on it? That was awesome, girls. Amen. Praise and worship ushers in the presence of God. It always does. It always will. Rihanna, who's speaking? You, you, you're. Rihanna, the director of. Let me read it. <laughs> House of Victory. Yeah. She had to turn around. Yeah, yeah Rihanna, I'm sorry, I, I messed up there because, okay. you know, I was thinking something, but here. Well, yeah, well, yeah. I'd like to. Hi, how's everybody tonight? Maybe we can clear up a little bit about the ministry. Sometimes we actually say House of Faith because we were House of Faith. So uh, with that being said, we are no longer and we have separated. Uh, Veggie Story Foundation, Veggie Story Foundation, opened up in 2017. And uh, the founders are Randall and Melinda Story, and they're here with us tonight. So they are the founders of the ministry. I am the ministry director, Rihanna Tilly Evans. And our board is here tonight, too, if you guys could stand up. We've got Randy and Nell Tarno, Rick Lear, and Randall and Melinda. So a little bit about the ministry. We're a faith-based organization. We're a faith-based ladies' discipleship ministry. We are a recovery ministry. And right now, because of corona, we're on a six-month program. We have the availability to make expansions and hope to do so in the future where we assume a nine-month or a one-year program. We have ideas in our head about the different things that we need to do. And right now, we're just trying to get policies and structure in place to be able to do those. I know that um, a lot of people don't think about how hard it is for a ministry to go on, especially when everything's going on in the world. But it takes a lot of work to make one of these go through, especially with Corona. It takes a lot of God. It's a move of God. It's a move of God's people that make these things continue. 
uh, we've got some diligent supporters of our ministry and I want to thank them tonight personally. Um, it's taken a lot, a lot of things aren't as easily accessible to these faith-based recovery ministries right now. I mean, it's a lot harder to fundraise, to be able to go out in public, the things that we're able to do to be received in churches. It's even harder for God's people to come forward and help with these ministries. So for those of you that have been involved helping with food, helping with clothing, helping us try to minister to these ladies when all of our teachers and stuff pretty much were kind of afraid to leave their homes, I want to say thank you. Uh, if you would like the opportunity to help with classes, I'd like for you to see Randall and Melinda's story, please. Uh, I need some help out there at the ministry. Uh, we need some people that aren't afraid to come into the ministry and help with classes. See Randall and Melinda, and if we have an open place, maybe you could come in and say a word, maybe share a testimony. Kind of like with children, it takes a village, it takes a body, cross body, to rear a recovery home. So I'm asking that everyone that can to get involved, if you can. I, I sat and thought about some different things on what I was going to talk about tonight. And um, coming out of recovery myself, I remember my deliverance in Christ, and I remember accepting Christ Jesus as my Savior. And I remember when I did that, I was so grateful for the deliverance, but I was so eager. I was so eager to get started, and I didn't know what to do or what my purpose was or what I was going to do. Uh, you get the deliverance and you get excited. Sometimes we get over eager. Well, I just wanted to give a word tonight. God laid it on my heart that I needed to tell you to be patient. Rome wasn't built in a day. You are a work from the salvation to the casket. The Holy Spirit comes to indwell in you and he's changing your character and he's working on you. So I wanted to talk tonight and give you my testimony on life after addiction. <coughs> So I got my deliverance through believing in Christ Jesus. When Jesus said, it is finished, I gained my salvation. It is finished. I am free. I was set free in Christ Jesus. But I couldn't give up. I had to continue to pursue the lifestyle, a changed lifestyle. He also says in Romans that you are a new life in Christ. I believe that's one and two. It tells you that uh, in Romans, uh, I believe it's 9, 1 and 2. Um, let me take a look. Let me read this passage to you. I think it's important. I had a few things wrote down without a podium. I'm kind of winging it. Romans 8, 1 and 2. For there is no condemnation for those who belong in Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. You're free. You don't have to live like you lived anymore. Once you've received the Holy Spirit, He starts to change you. He starts developing you into Christ-like character. When I first got sober, I had to get away from here. I was generational curse. I couldn't stay at Mama and Daddy's. I couldn't stay home. So I had to get away from here. Well, my sobriety happened. God made that happen with a divine deliverance. Jesus is the cure for addiction. To get that in there, I want you to know that he is what saved me and brought me out of addiction. And that's what I want to give back. But that didn't happen overnight. The restoration with my family, I had been not a mom for, for at least from the time my daughter was four till the time she was 14. So we're looking at a gap of between 10 and 12 years. The two years that I was there in the house, I wasn't much of a mother. He didn't give me my kids full custody right away. He didn't give me my kids back right away. We always expect things to happen and we expect them to happen instantly. God is producing a work in you. Pray, give it to him in petition of prayer. Make your request known to him, but don't expect the change to come overnight. It just happened when she was 14 that my husband pulled up and said he could, my ex-husband and said, I can't do this anymore and then I got custody of my daughter. I never regained full custody of my son. The whole time as I was going through that, I was seeking out churches and seeking out recovery programs out of town. When I made it back home, when I felt like I was secure enough to be able to come back here and maintain sobriety, my goals weren't to give back. My goals were to get at the top of my career. I wasn't changed yet. 
the manifestation of change did not happen overnight. It's something that I had to fail at, work at, and he changed my values and he changed my heart. He did this over a course of time. This is not something that I just instantly got with the deliverance from drugs. I wish I could say that it was, but the whole time I chose to focus on my attention with what mattered, which was Christ. Scripture. Sinking in and pouring into Scripture. In that, He was able to slowly change me, but I still didn't know what my purpose was. I have girls look at me and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what my purpose is. He'll let you know when it's your time. Stay connected. Stay around people that can keep you sober. Stay in the Word of God. But I don't want you to get un unrealistic expectations. And you need an accountability partner, someone to be there for you. Someone to be there with you to help you through. You never know exactly what He's going to do with you, but when He calls you, the only thing that you can do is be faithful. It was, it was probably 10 years in sobriety. I've got almost 14 years. 10 years into sobriety before I started seeking, wanting to get involved in anything. And it still didn't happen. It wasn't till two years ago that he got me involved in a little bit of helping with Sunday school and maybe being on a worship team. It, wa it wasn't instant. It wasn't something that I knew was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, I got to thinking I'd like to be involved. I'd just like to give back. I'd like to give back some of what I have to somebody that's struggling the way that I struggled. A lot of my family, as much as I've ministered and I've prayed and I've talked, are still not sober. It doesn't mean I'm going to give up. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to love harder. I'm going to dedicate more. I'm not going to give up. So with that drive, I decided to turn around and try to give back. It can be in a, in a small way that you're giving back, and I still can't tell you today where God has taken me. But I can tell you that I've never been happier than I am at this moment in my life by letting God do it His way in His time. Amen. I, I have never had such joy or such peace. I have never been more full than, I, than His way in His time. When God called me out to work in ministry, my friend Jennifer, and everybody says I don't ever shut up. She don't ever shut up. All right, so she is one of my best friends. I was standing at my corporate level job, which I had worked so hard and made it almost to the top of the corporate level job. And I had been slowly given back to the recovery home, which at that point was the House of Faith for Women. I was staying on the weekends helping. Jennifer calls me and she's going off at this moment about something and she's telling me something. And she's got good advice if you'll listen. The problem is Rihanna's got ADHD and she don't listen. Okay, so Jennifer states to me, you're not, you don't understand. This is what God has for you. You need to be doing this. Well, normally I let it rattle, but this time God shook my spirit. And God said, she's prophesizing on your life. I broke down in tears in front of the whole break room there at whatever Kroger I was redoing at the time. And I, I broke down in tears because I actually stopped long enough and heard something from the Lord. I allowed Him to get involved in my life. In a turn of events, it wasn't six months down the road and Randall and Melinda asked me to be a ministry director for the recovery home. Our life and our plans are nothing compared to the glory of God. What God wants with our life is what inevitably is going to bring us the most joy in life. I wish that I had known that and all the years that I had wasted just trying to find myself. The best advice that I can give is give him time Work out your, your spiritual being first. Set it at his feet for a while. Even if it takes you the most of your sobriety time to set it at his feet. And he is going to put you where he called you to be. Inevitably, I don't, my biggest fear is that I miss the opportunity to share the gospel. My whole entire way of thinking has changed. 
He has completely changed everything about me, everything I would think about, all goals that I had, everything that I could have possibly dreamed for myself. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and all things become new. I just wanted to remind you tonight that your testimony is not over the day you got sober. Every day of your life you are walking and He is molding you into His image. I am not going to stand up here and try to pretend like I'm somebody and not I'm not and say that I'm perfect. I make mistakes daily. I allow Him to correct me. I let Him be first in my life and my decisions come after. And I can stand on this side of it after almost 14 years and tell you that nothing makes me happier than serving the Lord. Anyway, I hope that inspired somebody today. I've got a couple of girls, bear with them, they're a little nervous, they've got a few testimonies. Look, uh, Terry just had to take his daughter JJ to the hospital, rush her to the hospital from here. And uh, I believe in corporate prayer. I believe before they get to the hospital, she could be totally healed. So, uh, Let's come together in agreement right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the one we put our faith and trust in, the one that saves every one of us and sets us all free. He is our deliverer. He is our healer. He is a great God that is more than enough to do this. Well, Father, we just thank you for your healing touch. We thank you for your love and your compassion that you show us each and every day. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. And we thank you for the hand that is upon us. And we just pray that you'd stretch your hand down here now, that you would touch JJ's body, that you would touch that baby, Lord God. We come against the attack of the devil in their lives who would try to uproot their faith, who would try to uproot their, their relationship with you through Jesus Christ. And we plead your blood upon them and a hedge of protection upon them. And I say that there will be times of rejoicing that are going to begin to take place. There's going to be a spirit of joy that's going to rise up in their hearts right now even as they drive drive to the hospital we say that there's going to be rejoicing and there's going to be even a leaping Lord inside of them that they're going to know that they know that they know that you have healed her and healed that baby in Jesus name we thank you Lord for that where two or more gathered in your name there you are and that we could ask anything according to your will and it shall be done Lord God we know that this is according to your will Lord God because you hate the shedding of innocent blood and so we plead your blood upon this baby father god and upon jj right now in jesus name and we come against the devil's plans in their lives and i thank you lord for what you're already doing in them and we pray that you would continue to increase in them continue to build up their faith father in jesus name amen amen, amen. you know what Satan and try to disrupt and try to destroy, try to tear your faith down. But you know what? When we come together believing in Christ, come here, Rihanna. You got it. Okay. But uh, okay, we pray. We're believing by faith in the name of Jesus. It's done. It's finished. He sat on the cross. It's finished. And that's what we got to stand on. I want to introduce the House of Victory. Do you guys, could y'all stand up for just a moment? <laughs> Thank you. All right, Alyssa, this is Alyssa Latrell. Hello. Hello. I just want to start out. I have four minutes clean today. Okay. I'm nervous, y'all. <laughs> okay. At a very young age, I started getting messed with by my uncle. And then at eight and a half years old, I got brutally raped. And I just started going downhill after that. I was kind of ashamed to say all this. Anyway, I, my mom got sick when I was eight and a half, and my dad was taking me, took me to one of my relatives' house. Anyway, during that time is when I got raped. So my dad had to go back and forth to twin hospitals and see me and my mom. Anyway, at 21, 22, I started experiencing implant and stuff. I got addicted to it and some pain pills. Then at 20, 
six three seven i got on methamphetamines started shooting up and went downhill after that kept asking anyway well he kept telling me it wasn't for me he told me that three different times the last time he told me that was in jail this last time anyway that's when rihanna came and got me from jail anyway i'm getting my act together now amen that's all i have for right now i'm there so here Hey guys, I'm super nervous. I didn't really prepare because I didn't find out till a few minutes ago I was actually speaking. But um, I guess that that's just going to be the way God speaks through me as I'm prepared, so just bear with me. Um, I'm Cassie and I had a really bad addiction to opiates and they have, it spiraled me out of control completely. I've got two kids. I got a 10 year old son named Max and a six year old named Macy. I don't have custody of them, obviously. Uh, they're with their, their father and stepmother. They're in a, a safe place, so I'm very thankful for that. As am I, I'm in a very safe place. Um, about uh, six weeks ago today, actually, I came to the House of Victory, praise God, and my husband went to CIC in Cersei. Julia Bullock and Michael Bullock came to my hotel room. My husband and I were recently homeless because we had lost our jobs and we were living out of the hotel. Um, but Michael and Julia came to our door banging on it at the earliest wee morning hours all the way in Sheridan and told us what, what, what options they had. And the next day we checked into detox. Um, three days later, he went to CIC and I to the House of Victory. So, um, they took, the, the pills they took so much from me. I don't see my kids, I don't get to talk to them. Uh, I hurt people that I love so much. Um, I went from a 911 dispatcher to now facing felony charges for the, the things that the drugs did and opiates are hard to come off of and I'm so thankful for the people that God put in my life Melinda and Randall Anel and Randy Vicki and Rihanna I'm so thankful and and also for CIC they're changing my husband's life too and we're gonna get to do this together and save our marriage and I'm gonna get my kids back. I've already spoken to my mom and she's coming Sunday to church. So God, in only, yeah, in only six short weeks, God has already restored my relationship with my mother and she's coming Sunday. And like I said, I haven't talked to my kids on the phone, no FaceTime, no nothing. And I'm just waiting for that to be next. So I hope that if there's a couple here that is struggling through the same thing that my husband and I were. Just know that you can get through it together and mainly with God. In your relationship, you love you love your significant other or your spouse. You love them in a different way once God is in between you and you have a relationship on God. And I'm just waiting on the restoration. I'm hopeful. Um, and I, like I said, I was debating about getting up here. But I'm alive today and Joyce Meyer didn't get up here by sitting in a seat, okay? And um, I, I feel like I've got, to, I've got to tell somebody because God got me through that. And if that helps you, then praise the Lord. But I'm so blessed, I'm hopeful, and I'm eager to see what God has in store for me. And I'm so thankful for each and every one of you that have put God in my life, or put, that God has put you in my life to help me. And I pray that I can do that for somebody else. Okay, so the couple that came and got myself and my husband, Julie and Michael Bullock, they're hoping to start a recovery program in Sheridan, and they're hoping for uh, my husband, once he graduates CIC in a year, well, about 10 months now, once he completes his program and I complete mine, they want us to run that so that we can be like the people that have helped us. So. I'm tired of seeing my face. <laughs> I'm Jen. And I'm 
save a child of God. About over a decade ago, I started an addiction. I was running away from trauma. I was running away from abandonment issues. I was running away from self-loathing. I wanted nothing more than to stop existing, but I didn't have the courage to do it. Later on, I came to realize, well, in the past year, I've come to realize that that not having a courage was God telling me that I was worth more. I went through the abusive relationships. I ran. I hit the ground running as soon as I could. I jumped states so many times, it's not even funny. I think my cat lived in five different states within one year. <laughs> um, one of the longest places I stayed was in San Antonio, Texas. And I got really, really bad on methamphetamines in San Antonio. Wasn't the first time I tried them, but I got really bad. You could see the bones poking out of me. And I'm a big old girl. <laughs> but <laughs> it was bad. And you could almost see the death crawling over my face. In 2015, I met my ex-husband. I thought he was the bee's knees. And I gave up on everything. I quit for about a year or two. We found out that we weren't we thought we weren't able to have kids and I went back to my addiction. My addiction cost me my marriage. It cost me my home. It cost me my job. And in 2018, I met Shane Rhodes. And him and I are currently still together. Within probably about a month of being together, we were pregnant. My addiction cost me my kids. I spent years trying to have those babies only to lose them. By the grace of God, my one-year-old, his meconium was clean and they didn't take him until after I was pregnant with his brother and still using. DHS came on May 22nd and took Jack. We were living in a tent with our six-month-old baby, trying to get clean on our own, planning on just skipping state with court and everything else still pending. May 28th was the last day I touched anything. When they took Jack, they took Shane as well because he had charges that he was still waiting on and was absconding and everything else. Well, throughout the end of May and the beginning of June, I'm trying to do this on my own. I'm homeless, I'm pregnant, and I just lost the baby that I already had to DHS. Had no way of supporting myself and I w was thinking really badly about myself. I was about to kill both me and the baby I was pregnant with because if I couldn't be a mom to the child I already had, who was I to think that I could bring another one into the world? June 28th, I fully prepared a shot to kill both me and Jasper. I made one phone call. I made one phone call thinking they were never going to respond and I could just get it over with. I was taken in by that one phone call into a faith-based rehab. And Recovery Through Christ changed my life in that moment by taking me in. And I came in just thinking I was going to get Jack on a visitation and bounce out. I was the type of person that had no belief in God. I had no faith in anything other than my own independence. and that seriously failed me before. I don't know why I still had faith in it. <laughs> but <laughs> I was ready to, I was ready to run, but God was ready for me to sit still. And he has some weird ways of making you sit still. I checked in June 28th. July 9th, Teresa got a phone call saying that I had a warrant out for my arrest. I had been caught up in a drug bust and the charges, the sales that I had made in February before I got clean were now biting me in the butt. I still had no faith at that point in time. July 18th, I finally broke. I felt like I had nothing left. There was no way I was going to make it through this. Why was I even trying? 
and I dropped my Bible. And it opened up to Job. Naked I came into this world, and naked I shall return. And it spoke to me on a level that I will never, ever be able to explain. Because only the Holy Spirit can speak to you on that level. I gave my life to God. I said, I can't do it anymore, so I need you too. Because obviously where I've tried, I've failed. Look where it got me. I turned myself in after getting baptized. They OR'd me out. That's unheard of in Faulkner County. For drug charges, it's unheard of for them not to release you to a state funded. But God. I continued going, I continued at RTC. And when the Spirit moved, the Spirit told me it's time for me to seek Him further. And I came to the House of Victory. And I never knew how much I needed these girls until I got there. I don't know if they needed me, but I darn too needed them. <laughs> November 15th, I had a beautiful little boy. He was perfectly healthy, just for the record, Jasper. And I sent, my, I sent Jasper to my mom, because I am court ordered to a year. And Jack is going to my mom within the next month. My mom's in Colorado. Shane went to prison for the same charges that I'm facing because he wasn't able to get to a rehab. But God sat him down where he was. He's given his life to God and we are tired of living in sin. We're getting married next week. We want to be the God-fearing parents that our children deserve. And we're gonna do it before our kids can remember that we weren't. I go to court June 24th and I have every faith that that judge is going to release me. Because I know that my God is more powerful than any courtroom. And I know that no matter where I go, he is right here with me because he's inside of me. There's always that question of if you could go back and change it, would you? If I could go back, I wouldn't choose it. But I wouldn't change it. Because my burdens became my blessings. And I'm hoping that my trials become a testimony that speaks to someone and can help someone. Because if the Lord can help me, I was the lowest of the low. If he could pick me up off the ground and tell me that I'm worthy and tell me that I am beautiful and that I deserve more. Oh, but our God, that's the God I serve. I think that's all I've got. You can quit many a time on your own. But until God intervenes, until God gets brings you in and pulls you in, until the Holy Spirit starts dealing with you, there's probably no hope. I only know of very few people that's ever quit willpower. But you know, even with willpower, they're miserable. They're miserable because they, they're not in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Without that relationship, you might quit dope, but you're not going to have any joy, any peace, any happiness. You're not going to be able to get through life like you should. Because our God has the best for us. He wants the best for us. We've heard four testimonies of how their life was, where it is now. And like Brianna said, it's continuing. It's a daily deal. You don't live for tomorrow, you live for today. Don't worry about tomorrow, I think the word says that. Hang on a minute. Praise God. But tomorrow has got its own problems. Worry about today. Well, let me back up. There's no worry. You pray about today. When I give my life to Jesus Christ and after I truly found out who God was, I don't worry. Worry is not going to change anything but make everything worse. 
you know what, it is what it is. I'm going to serve Christ no matter what. So keep building your testimony day by day walk and show people who you are. Keep evolving or keep creating your testimony because I'm sure many people have heard this testimony on Facebook Live or, or just here in the parking lot. People's lives have changed because of testimony. They told us two years ago when we started this testimony thing, it won't work. It won't work. Testimonies don't work. Look around. They work. They work. They'll continue to work because it's what God has done in your life. If there's anybody that needs prayer for anything, no matter what it is, you know, we're here. I think we got one, two, three, four. We got a few pastors out here. We got people, men and women of God that'll pray with you. Whatever you need. It's up to you. It's up to you. I know I, I'm always need something for God. I'm always looking, Lord, what, what do you want with my life next? What do you want me to do next? There's always something God wants you to do. Man, we get comfortable. I don't want to get comfortable. Man, nudge me, Lord. Step on my toes. Do whatever it takes. Get me, keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. You know, I, I don't mind backing up one step as long as I went two steps. I don't want to go backwards. I'm not going backwards. I'm going to just keep going forward for Jesus Christ. Being a follower of Jesus Christ is more than anything we could ever imagine. You know, we see a lot of people here. Most of you guys, probably all of you are saved. I don't know. But I guarantee you, you need something. You need something from God. Even if you don't come up here to get prayer, call on somebody. Ask somebody for prayer. Don't ever give up. Don't ever, ever, ever give up. You know, I got a sign on my, on my wall and a little poster board up there. A uh, preacher put up there probably nine years ago. Never give up. He said he was about to give up. He said he was about to give up. He did everything was just going wrong, but that's what the devil does and, and he's just driving down the road. Calling out to God, why? Why is this all happening? What's happening? What you know, you gotta give me a sign, God, you gotta give me a sign. He says he said he's just driving, he said he pulls in the cabin, takes the exit of the ramp. Some lady cuts him off. Oh, he's furious. He's mad. He said, look at this. I can't even, everybody, people cut me off. And he slams on his brakes. Traffic comes to a stop. Right there in front of him. The license plate. Never give up. There's one plate like that in Arkansas. Never give up. God knew what he was going through. He was asking God for a sign. Give me something. Give me a word. Right there. The lady cut him off. He was mad because the lady cut him off. He didn't say it was a lady, but I'm going to say it was. But anyways, <laughs> I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. No, I'm kidding. It was a lady. But anyways, that's, that, the ice place says never give up. And he wrote that on my deal, and he grabbed the eraser to erase it off there. I said, don't erase that. Well, why not? I said, because when I'm having a bad day, when things aren't going quite right, I can sit here and look up at that and think of that story that God did for you because you're calling out for, to him. And you know what? He said, stay, right behind that car, he repented. Father, forgive me. Forgive me for doubting. Forgive me. All this stuff that's happening don't mean a thing. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to serve you no matter what. And you know, the stuff that happened, it all kind of washed away. It all went away. It wasn't nothing to do with him, but he's the pastor, so everybody's blaming him. Pastor gets all the grief. But you know what? Praise God. You know, I'm thankful that we can call on Him. I'm thankful that we humble ourselves and repent. When we get off into sin, when we're doing things wrong, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. You know, it's, it's all, you didn't need to pray, bring it to my attention if I've done anything. Because life gets to where sometimes we don't even realize it's sin. Because Satan just throws it in there a little bit. Well, surely that's okay. Surely that's okay. So bring it to my attention, Lord. 
If I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing, bring it to my attention so I can repent. I don't want to keep get anything in between me and, and God the Father. The only way to get to God the Father is through His Son, Jesus. There's no other way. There's only one way to heaven. There's only one way to God the Father, and that's Jesus. And He is the truth. He is the life. The Word says, No man coming to the Father but by Him. Praise God. We had a good night. Good weather. Good turnout. So let's circle up. Let's pray. Let's believe God. Let's believe God for whatever you want. And before we leave, there's bags of potatoes over there. Please take your bag or two of potatoes. They're big Idaho potatoes. They're fresh from Idaho. I went and got them myself. No, I didn't. I repent. I'm sorry, Lord. I didn't bring it. But I prayed for them. And God brought them. So let's make a big circle. Call out to God what we need. You know, I, God uh, restored my relationship with my daughter from three years ago. She come down, and then she never was a fan of Chrissy's house Facebook. So I, she, I asked her to join it. She did, and the very next week she blasted me on Facebook. See, Satan tried to use it. So he, God restored that relationship, but then we didn't talk for another two weeks. I sent her messages with no response. But the other day, she messaged me. She said, Dad, I love you. So, praise the Lord. You know, so, I'm not giving up. I'm, there ain't no quit in me. You know, I'm no, I'm a nobody trying to be, tell somebody. But, baby, trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. Man, you think I... I yeah. But that's who I am. I'm trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. And his name would be Jesus. Call out your prayer to God. Just call it out. We're about 99% ready, but you know what? It's not our timing. It's God's timing. We, 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 we like maybe 1% of something that needs to be done, but then there's a whole other th thing. We need to have a house bomb. We need to have everything set up. So it's coming together. You know, we said when we started this thing, we're not going to rush it. We're going to let God be God. Amen. Any other prayers? I got a scripture I want to read. All right. Here. Read that scripture. If it's the one I'm thinking of, it's awesome. Come on over here, honey. <laughs> I mean, first of all, it is a joy to be in the midst of fellow believers. Amen. Amen. To smile, to laugh, to talk a little trash. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's good. Yeah. We can have fun and be Christians. I mean, you know, at least I'm having fun. Yeah. <laughs> but I probably am the only one talking trash, too. <laughs> Right? Yeah, but this is us. It's uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people, a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. Yes. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. That is who you are. You are a, a chosen generation. Yes. You did not miss the mark. You you did not fall short. We have all fallen short. But God has chosen you to show forth His glory. And and if if sometimes you think you're not, you are. And even when you fall down, you get back up. The Bible says that it, the first time I preached about a righteous man falling. And getting back up was in this building when we were thinking about buying it when we had a church. 
And I was up there, I said, a righteous man may fall, and this little kid was walking across the room, and he fell down. But he keeps getting up. You see, that's what makes us righteous. Because we know without God, we can't do it. But I can't go anywhere else. When I make mistakes, I can't, I can't really go to my wife to make me feel better. I can't go to my mom or to my dad. I go to the Father. Amen. Amen. And He tells me I'm a chosen generation. Yes. Amen. His very own people Amen. to show forth His glory. So remember that. Amen. Remember that. Close us up. Uh, guys, remember my Manny Helen and my family, there's been a bass found between our large intestines and our liver. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a wonderful night to come together. And we just thank you so much for this time. And I'm so blessed by the testimonies. I mean, we are all born with a Jesus-shaped hole in our hearts. And when he's the only thing that can fill that. And it's just amazing to watch where people were and to where they are and what you've done through their lives. We're so, we, just, we, just, we, we just can't fathom what we can do and, and through you. And I think about that. I think about how much greater heaven will be. I mean, we, we got some old lowly bodies we walk around in right now, but you fix those pretty good. But boy, what's coming is going to be awesome. And I'm, and I'm so thankful, Lord, that, that we got a home to go to. I thank you for Rihanna's testimony this evening because it reminded me of a kind of something I think about from time to time. And everybody in this place is in one of four steps of walking with Jesus. And the, the first one is coming to faith. And then the second one, is repentance and redemption and some people have already gotten that far but the next one is obedience and obedience is tough and that's followed by perseverance the whole thing we're living through right now is a race God Paul told us it's a race and I, I want to get there one day Lord and I want to you to pat me on the head and say well done good and faithful servant and I want everybody here to be able to say that too because you know most of my life I've been on the back row but I want to be on the front row when I get to heaven so you guys, I just, I thank you for your time, Lord, tonight, and I just thank you for everybody that came, and, and just, Lord, I know there's some needs here, and, and we can't go through all of them, and there's some, there's definitely some spiritual needs, there's some physical needs, there's a whole lot of things that only you can repair. I do want to pray for JJ that went to the hospital, Lord, I know you're in that situation, you always are, and I thank you, Lord, for all of our needs, and you know them before we ever say them, but Lord, we're called to say them, we're called to ask us what you ask you receive, Lord. And I just ask you tonight that you would bless everyone here. I'm asking, Lord. Bless everyone here. Fill them with your spirit. Guide them in their days. Show them who they are so that you can show the world through them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.